Number seven. Those close-up shots. I've mentioned this before, how a lot of movies and shows back then felt they needed to get a lot of wide-angle close-up shots. This would be fine if the idea was to create an uncomfortable scenario, but for a while, it seems like a lot of directors did it just to be different and artsy. And here, it's no exception. While this decision did tone down big time in the other two movies, and thank God for that, we had to put up with quite a lot of it in Fellowship of the Ring. And don't get me wrong, sometimes it's called for, like this scene where Frodo's about to put the ring on at the Prancing Pony, which, by the way, might not be the best name for a place like this. I look at the atmosphere and I feel more... the decaying mule. But like I said, here it's supposed to be a little off and uncomfortable, so the close-ups work. But come on, when Bilbo is just talking normally, do we really need to be this close? Even when Gandalf is saying goodbye, look at that! You can count the wrinkles under his eyeballs! How would you like it if I filmed conversations like this? Hey, Malcolm, did you hear they might be getting a new judge for American Idol? Yeah, I heard they might be getting a new host, too. Oh, really? You mean they're getting rid of... what's his name? Yeah, what is that guy's name again? Is it Seacrest? Is he safe? I know we're supposed to feel close to the characters, but good god, we don't need to be this close. <gasps> Is it secret? Is it safe? Number six. Denethor. Just... just Denethor. If there's any character I think was more over-the-top simplified in these movies, it's this one. And I know a lot of you may disagree, but I got some serious issues with this guy. Everyone describes him as a Shakespearean villain, being very complex and very sympathetic. Well, I'm glad you guys saw that, but for me, I just saw a crazy asshole. The whole time he seems to have just two settings, extreme jerk or extreme nutball. Yeah, when he's not frowning or slobbering or shaking his head screaming, that leaves very little room to actually feel sorry for him. Which I'm told is the intention they were going for. You will not take my son from me! The line has ended! Condor is mine! Abandon your post! Leave my life! It looks like there was supposed to be a real tragic element to him. Like, he used to be a dignified steward and has gone mad with power. But there's just so little dignity you can see in this guy. And I know the idea is that he's supposed to have lost all his honor, but you're supposed to give some idea that there was some honor there to begin with. And you don't really get that. The only time the guy actually had sympathy from me was when he found out about Boromir's death, and, oddly enough, when Pippin is offering his services. Until my lord release me, or death. And I shall not forget it, nor fail to reward that which is given. He does actually seem thankful and somewhat kind in this brief moment. And I'm not saying we need a ton of that, but we just need more than what we got. But no, we need obvious symbolism to show that the decision makers in their ivory towers don't understand the fragility of life. Mist and shadow, cloud and shade. If I wanted slurping disgustingness, I'd go watch more of Gimli. <coughs> Even his death seems over-the-top goofy. Just when they're about to give him something close to a remorseful moment, what do they do? <coughs> what, what, what? This isn't Lord of the Rings, it's a fucking itchy and scratchy cartoon. <laughs> All I gotta say is, if you were looking to create a sourful Shakespearean villain, my guess is you need a little bit more dignity than this. We'll be back in a bit. Until then, let the emotional weight of this scene sink in.
I'm not dead! There's a saying that nobody ever really dies in TV. That there's always a way to bring a popular character back. Well, the same definitely can be said for Lord of the Rings movies. First they think Gandalf is dead. Alleluia. Then they think Merry and Pippin are dead. Alleluia. Then they think Aragorn is dead. Alleluia. Then they think Frodo is dead. Alleluia. Good God, I thought the ending had too many fake outs. This is like a new world record. Hell, they probably cut this Mouth of Sauron scene from Return of the King because it was twice that they did a Frodo death fake out. I have a token I was bidden to show thee. Know that he suffered greatly at the hands of his hosts. We've done this. We've done this already. The whole spider killing him thing. It didn't fool us then, it isn't fooling us now. Honestly, we just want you to open your gates for a moment. I go last! That still only counts as one! In fact, I think the only reason Boromir never came back is because Sean Bean has it in his contract that he has to die in every single role that he's in. And stay dead! But everyone else? Eh, death is just a roadblock to pass. It's like they build up that no matter what, these characters are fucking invincible. Look at this, how many times do they throw themselves into an army of killers and never even come out with a scratch on them? The funniest is probably this one with Aragorn and Gimli. That is fucking ridiculous. This long line of killer monsters all being taken down by two men. One of them half the size of the rest of them. Even in the final climax, they know they have nothing to fear. Listen to how they talk. Certainty of death, small chance of success. What are we waiting for? We've done this a million times. Even if we die, we're bound to bounce right back. Hell, we have an entire army of dead people. It's like having a cold. You're on a commission for a bit, but you come back swinging. Nothing like walking through the valley of the shadow of death when that valley is just the size of a thimble. That is fucking ridiculous. Number four. Arwen's life is now tied to the fate of the ring. Eh? Now, there's no doubt that Arwen's role has been expanded in the movies, and to be honest, I really don't mind. It's a bit of a sausage fest in here anyway, and hell, even the woman who does join the fight has to pretend she has a sausage. So having her do more stuff, I think, was a welcome addition. But then we get this really weird nonsense. Arwen is dying. The light of the even star is failing. As Sauron's power grows, her strength wanes. Uh, how the hell did that happen? We get something about the light of Bruhaha that's now somehow tied to Sauron growing because I have no clue. It was made up for the movie, I guess, as a means to give Aragorn something else to fight for, or maybe keep her more out of the way so that their being reunited would mean more? I'm not sure what the intention was, but... Brother, does it make no sense? What is that light thing she gave up? If it makes her mortal, then how come none of the other mortal people in Middle-earth are dying? In fact, if it does make her mortal, then how come they were talking about how much it's gonna suck when she stays immortal in that other scene? In fact, hell, they made immortality look like such a bitch, she'd probably be welcoming death by this point! In most cases like this, you could say that it's explained in the book, but this was a new scene, and talked in very little detail about it. The more I think about it, maybe it would have been cooler if they wrote it that she went to fight with the rest of the army. She was originally filmed in the Helm's Deep battle until they edited her out. Wouldn't it be nice to give her a little bit more battle damage than a branch from a tree? Ooh, look at that scar! It shows she's tough and pushes on after battling prickly leaves! I don't know. If you're gonna expand the character, at least do it in a way that makes sense. Until then, look pretty, cry, and don't cut any hedges. Arwen's life is now tied to the fate of the ring. Eh? Huh?